I've been working with software since 1993. I've worked with a lot of recognizable brands, including Amazon.com, eBay. I've worked with ThoughtWorks, HomeAway, uh, a number of small startups. Um, and uh, I uh, have been, I've been an individual contributor and a manager of development teams during that time. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is take a little bit of a straw poll. So if you, uh, everyone in this room who, um, who has to provide estimates as part of their daily work, please raise your hand. Okay, quite the vast majority of you are required to provide estimates as part of your daily work. Okay, um, how many people in this room require estimates of other people? Raise your hand. Okay, quite a lot of you, good. Okay, so I hope that the content of this, of this talk will be relevant to both groups of people. And, and there was a little bit of crossover, so, um, so some of you are uh, passing on the pain, it looks like. Um, so I want to first give a little background on why I decided to talk about estimation. Uh, as over the years, it seems to me like estimation is a very big pain point in software projects. It seems to be a source of great tension between developers and the business and developers and managers and between managers and managers in the business. Um, and uh, so what I hope to do today is uh, at least start a conversation about an approach that I think is a little more human uh, around estimates. As a project manager, I get asked one question more often than anything else. Um, and I suspect that most of you will identify with this question. When can I have it? Um, ha how many of you have been asked this question? Um, Okay, how many of you feel completely comfortable answering this question? One person. <laughs> okay, do you want to do you want to tell us uh, you know why, why it's so easy for you to answer that question? Okay, it, it's he said it's black and white. You you, you can have it or you can't. Okay, um, so the question wasn't whether you can have it. The question was when can you have it? Um, so, sorry, go ahead. Right, okay, okay. Uh, the, the gentleman in the back is a big proponent of deadline-driven development. <laughs> okay, um, so let me ask the rest of you um, why you don't feel comfortable answering this question, what makes it so difficult? Is anyone willing to brave an answer? Go ahead. Yes, that is a very brilliant answer. So um, there are a lot of dependencies. It depends on many, many factors. Uh, and it becomes very difficult uh, as complexity increases uh, to, to provide any kind of valid estimate. Um, OK, so uh, let's do a little bit of role playing here. Um, I, I'm, I've just become the CEO of a brand new company. It's a fake company. I'm not really a CEO. Just in case somebody Twitters that. Um, uh, okay, so, um, so I have done the market research and I've come up with, in my fake company, uh, the next cutting edge product. Okay, so I'm really excited about this product. I think it will change the face of the marketplace as we know it. Um, I've got my backers and I've hired every single one of you to help me develop it. Okay, are you ready? All right, um, so the product itself is, drum roll please, sliced bread. Okay, so I've decided I want to develop a loaf of freshly baked, cutting edge sliced bread. Okay? And this is going to be the signature product for my company. 
Half-Baked Incorporated. Okay, so um, of course, as the CEO of the company, uh, I'm really excited about my product. I only have one question, one burning question of you guys. In my mind, as the CEO, you guys, as my developers, are here to answer one question. When can I have it? Okay, so um, I would like you guys to, um, you've got sort of some groups at your tables. So I want you to spend a minute, you in the back kind of split up and itself organize into groups. And I want you to discuss this question. How long will it take you to make me a loaf of sliced bread? Okay, and I, and I want you to try to come up with an answer. How long will it take? Okay, so uh, I'll give you about a minute to discuss with your, with your groups. Uh, so there's a question back here. Uh, are, you right? are you asking that question to the right audience? I don't know. Like, are you people, Sorry, go ahead. I don't know people here will be having the domain knowledge here. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, there are a lot of people that don't know how to bake sliced bread. So um, uh, just do the best you can. Um, if, if there's somebody at your table who, who knows something about it, try, try to make use of that skill. But just, you know, take your best guess. Only one loaf to start. I, 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 I'm looking for my first loaf of sliced bread. So that should be time enough, right? Yeah? Do you need more time? Go ahead. The infrastructure. Um, so let's assume you have the infrastructure, you have all the tools that you need to make it. Okay, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Uh, no, um, this is not a product that exists in the marketplace, so it has to be made from scratch. Why did you come up with one day? So we'll gather all the requirements and we'll outsource it. Gather yeah, <laughs> So I'm guessing you're saying that you think that outsourcing makes things faster? No, if somebody has the expertise, we'll give it to them. I mean, there are a lot of bakeries. Uh -huh. It's not available. We'll give the menu whatever is required okay. to include it. All right. Okay. Outsourcing will make it halfway. It looks like It looks like cops. It looks like cops. It looks like Okay, okay. Fair enough. You don't know what type of product I want. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to help you guys out a little bit because it seems to me like you're struggling um, with the domain knowledge. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to break it down a little bit um, and just go through the tasks that we expect for, for making all the bread. Okay, so you have to make the dough. So we're, we're assuming we have all the ingredients. We're assuming that you guys know how to do this, right? Okay, so you have to make the dough, you have to let it rise, you have to preheat the oven, and you have to bake it. All right? So given that, do you want to, any of you want to revise your estimate? You, at the, this table you set two days, so you stand by your two-day estimate? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. One day roundup. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Has to be fresh. Half a day. Okay. Half a day. Fair enough. Okay. Any anybody else? Yes. Since it's a new company, the first day will be uh, in learning how to make it. The yeah. Second day will be actually making it and packaging. Okay. So you still think it's two days? Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Six hours. Okay. Um, do you, do you guys feel really confident in your estimates? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, so I tried to put myself in the mind of a developer and I thought, okay, two hours for this, right? Um, uh, okay, may, maybe two hours. Some of you, you know, said more. Um, it probably would take more time, uh, maybe half a day, right? Um, so... So let's say we go ahead and stick with the half a day estimate, for example. Um, and we say to me, the CEO, it's going to take us half a day, um, or two days, or whatever the estimate is. Um, and we start working on our loaf of bread. So as we're, uh, as we're building our loaf of bread, um, something happens. <laughs> And I realized that I forgot some stuff, right? Um, okay, so here are a few other things that need to happen before my bread can be complete. So I, I realize I don't have any of the ingredients, sugar, eggs, flour, yeast, I don't have anything. I have to activate the yeast. Um, I have to knead the dough and I have to slice the bread. So, so I've started work, I've given my estimate, um, and all of a sudden these new things that I just didn't think about came along. Um, and uh, I realized my half a day is just not going to be enough. Right, or even my two days might not be enough because you know I live in the wilderness in Alaska. In order to get supplies where I am, it might take me a week, right, um, etc. So there are a lot of different reasons why why that estimate might be wrong. So so I have to go back to the CEO and say CEO and say, you know, okay, maybe a whole day, maybe for those of you who said two days, maybe it's now four days, right? Okay. Um, so, so what happened there? What happened? So, yeah, so the most important thing here is that as soon as you gave an estimate, an unspoken deadline was set, right? It doesn't matter what that estimate was, you created the deadline by giving that estimate, okay? So the next thing that happened is you didn't meet it. Um, and the CEO is disappointed and you feel bad because you didn't make your deadline and you're, there are some things you didn't think about. Um, some of you tried really hard to think of all the possible contingencies um, and uh, maybe, you, maybe you met it, maybe you didn't. But uh, I'm going to give you a little hint that your day is about to get worse. I don't know if you can hear my music in the back there. Um, okay, so there's been a zombie attack. And the world, we're now in a post-apocalyptic zombie world, right? There are no more stores. You can't get the ingredients that we're looking for for our slice of bread because the stores are obliterated. The streets are filled with roving bands of zombies. And there's only one ray of light in all of this. And that is that Half-Baked Incorporated is still open for business. <laughs> okay? Somehow we all managed to survive. You um, everything. Say again? You sabotaged. So we sabotaged. Yeah, we, we, we might have, you know, caused the zombie attack. That's very possible. No, I, yeah, um, I, I don't think we're that evil. You know, I mean, we're, we're misguided but not evil. Um, okay, so we're still open for business. Um, you guys are all still working for Half-Baked Incorporated. And now, guess what? That loaf of freshly baked bread is much more valuable. So me as the CEO, I'm thinking, I really want this loaf of freshly baked bread. 
However, all the ingredients have disappeared. So what you guys estimated in terms of making this loaf of bread um, has sort of gone up in smoke, along with the zombies earlier. Um, so uh, what we've decided to do is look at the basic ingredients that make up that loaf of bread. So here they are. Water, butter, sugar, flour, yeast, eggs. Um, OK, so what I need you guys to do, the, the question is exactly the same as it was before. When do I get my freshly baked loaf, the loaf of bread? Because now I really, really want it. Um, so you need to answer the question again, right? Um, but you need to come up with all these ingredients from scratch, OK? So there's no butter in the store, so you have to make it from scratch. There, there, you, you might find a cow roaming around or a chicken. Um, so you've got to grow the flour. You know, you've got to forage for seeds. Uh, you have to figure out how to make yeast. I, I have no idea how to make yeast. I think there's some fermentation process that happens, but that's all I know. Um, and you've got to you've got to grind the flour, you have to mill it. You've got to make the sugar. Okay, so I'll give you about a minute to talk amongst yourselves and tell me how long it will take me to get my loaf of freshly baked bread. Because that's all I care about is my loaf of bread. <laughs> no, you, you can't you can't get rid of the eggs. It's it's egg bread. So yeah. I, I need the egg bread. I need the eggs. <laughs> Oh, oh, you have a question? Yeah. So if, the, if it is going to be the only company around, so we have all the time in the world to monopolize? Yes, we have all the time in the world. Time is no object. Uh, all you have to do is come up with an accurate assessment of the amount of time it will take. Yeah, people around the consume your bread? Well, there's us, at least, right? So it can be a multi-grain uh, uh, bread, or uh, it can be any, any flavor of a bread that we can provide. Okay, as so, long as we draw a deadline, it would be difficult for us to come up with an estimate. Okay, so, so the question was, um, that can, can the requirements grow? Can it be a multi-grain bread, right? Okay, can we add things to it? Um, so I'm, I'm sensing a bit of scope creep here. Um, so a, as the CEO of Half Baked Incorporated, um, I'm going to be very clear about this. I just want a loaf of freshly baked bread that includes these ingredients, okay? So, uh, and as quickly as you can get it to me because I've got a market out there waiting for this bread. 10 days. 10 days. Okay, so gentleman in front says we can't estimate. How many of you guys agree with that assessment? Yep, 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 yep. OK, about half of you. So the rest of you, you feel like you can estimate this? Yes, OK. And you would feel completely confident in those estimates? <laughs> you would stand by those estimates no matter what. Because remember what we said earlier, as soon as you give me a number, that is a deadline. Yeah, go ahead. We did our estimation based on an assumption. Yeah. So these assumptions have to be validated. If the assumptions are true, mm -hmm. the estimate will be accurate. Yeah. So it does not mean that the estimation is one time accurate. Yeah. We need to be validating the assumptions. Correct. So that is the key thing. So our our valid assumption is sugar is the one which takes maximum lead time mm -hmm. for cultivating sugar cane and making it sugar. <coughs> okay. So we took six months for that. So one I mean Six six would be one eighty, and that half day for making the bread. So one eighty days plus half day. Okay. okay. No so we we. Uh, and then you have one hour less than over there, right? Sorry. So these that, are the assumptions. If my assumptions go wrong, yeah, yeah. Also go wrong. All okay. Can go in parallel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the gentleman in the front here said um, that one hundred and eighty days plus half day. Yeah. Right. Which seemed kind of random, but um, do do you feel confident in that no. assessment? No. Okay. So, so he said 180 days plus half day um, because there are a lot of assumptions that go into it. They chose sugar as the long pole in the tent, so to speak, because you have to cultivate the sugar cane 
get to process the sugar, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, so, but, um, so what, what he said to me, I don't, I don't know if you heard the, the whole conversation, um, but he, you know, he explained all this to me. And he said, you know, there are a lot of assumptions that we made in order to get to that figure. Okay, so me as the CEO, you know what I heard? Blah, 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 six months. That's what I heard. Okay. Um, and and it, it's very true, right? Um, so as the CEO, I, I have a one-track mind. I just care when I get my product, right? I want something out there cool to show people. I want it to seem like I'm, you know, producing stuff in the world. Uh, and I want my revolutionary sliced bread to be out there being eaten. Um, so when I ask the question, how long is it going to take you to get me my sliced bread, all I care about is how long, right? So that's what I'm listening for, right? OK, so I'm probably being unfair to some CEOs out there. I'm sure that some of them are, are a little better than this. But I can tell you I've met many CEOs like me, and they're not, right? OK, so, um, so moving on, um, as we said before, the question remains the same one. Can I have my loaf of sliced bread? Um, so this, the point of all this is that this is extraordinarily difficult to do. We're going to revisit the sliced bread um, uh, in, a, in a little while. Um, but and, and you, you're, you're asking yourself, what does bread have to do with software development? Um, I thought it was a really good metaphor because um, in a way, when you think about software development, what we do um, manages the entire supply from scratch to market, right? Um, in some cases, we might put together collections of things that already exist out there um, to, to make a finished product. But, it, but actually, most of the time, we're building from scratch. Um, and teams of developers often specialize around the individual ingredients, right? So, so developers might uh, know all about the flour. And the flour is the foundational system for building the bread. But there might be, as somebody else here pointed, very wisely pointed out, there might be 10 different kinds of flour. There's rice flour, and buckwheat flour, and whole wheat flour. And each kind of flour that you use has a different effect on the end product. Um, so as a developer, if I'm asked to do an estimate of the whole loaf of bread, I'm going to be thinking about my type of flour, right? Um, and you know whatever experience I have in actually building that whole loaf of bread. Um, so the next thing I want to do, um, slightly more serious exercise, not involving uh, zombies. Um, I just want you guys to talk amongst yourselves and think about what are the things that influence project delivery. Like what has an effect on whether or not you can actually deliver a project. Just list things out. So go ahead and you can discuss, and then we'll start, start listing things out on this flip chart here. Just start calling some things out, and I'll write them up here. Resources, yep. Dependencies, okay. Technical expertise. Okay. Unplanned leave. Distributed teams. Yeah. Software, hardware environment. Company processes, yeah. Scope creep. The CEO. What else? Assumptions. Domain expertise. Okay, what else? Time. Budget? Yeah. Okay. What else? Time. Time? Yeah. I would say project planning. Everything you 
Motivation yet? Project planning? Okay. Understanding of the requirements. Okay. Project planning. Estimates. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? Risk. No one. No one. No, no, it's kind of what we're listing, right? A little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so risks. What else? Environmental conditions. Environmental conditions. Okay. Anything else? Technological limitations. Technological limitations. Okay. Acquisition and mergers. Acquisitions and mergers, that's a good one. Yeah. What else? Okay, we have a good list. Um, do we have any project managers in the room? One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so this is the list you guys came up with. So I'll show you my list in a minute. Um, so do you, project managers, do you feel like you can accurately plan for all of these things? No. Most of you said no. So who said yes? Uh, no, okay. You want, want it very clearly said, I said no. Okay. Um, did anyone say yes? Okay. Is there anyone in the room that feels like you can accurately plan for all of these things? Okay. Good. All right. Um, this is the list I came up with. All right. So let's just go through some of these. That wasn't me. Um, okay. So... Team collaboration, so your team's ability to collaborate has an effect. Complexity, skill levels and experience, somebody said that. Um, the health of the team, the philosophy of the team, the weather that day. Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, I'm not joking. The weather really does have an effect on whether you can deliver. Semantics, how you interpret things. Because we use words in order to communicate, so semantics is basically, you know, very important. Phone connections if you're on a distributed team, project tools, politics at the company, local, state, national, and international level. Okay, so I'll give you an example of the international level. If Obama decides to change immigration policies um, and, you know, an engineer can't cross the border, uh, then we, we're, you know, down one engineer. Uh, crime rates, finances, religion, education, the economy, move to the developer, move to the CEO, move to the developer's kids. <laughs> I'm sure many of you can identify with that. And of course, zombie attacks, right? Okay, um, so I'm gonna ask you to think about one more thing. What can a typical team member control? Okay, um, you don't have to tell me, just think about it. Spend, spend about 10 seconds writing down things if you want to you know, think about it. What, what can a typical team member do? Okay, here's my list, and this is arguable. <laughs> right? Okay, so as a typical team member, you can most of the time control whether I actually come to work. Um, and I, I, I can pretty well control the task I'm doing right now. Pretty well, not always. Sometimes those tasks get out of hand. Okay, so do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, um, we are asking engineers who have control over these things to estimate based on this, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, all right, so it, it begs the question, uh, can we estimate at all, right? Is, is estimation something we can do? Um, so human beings are not hardwired to be able to, to estimate in exact units of measurement. Does the gentleman in the back has a question? Yeah. Right. So the, the, the gentleman over there by the pool, 
Um, he said, uh, when we ask for estimates, we're really only asking a developer to estimate the bees. We're not really asking them to account for all of this, right? So, um, which in a way beautifully makes my point, right? Um, so even if you are aware and you understand that developers don't have in any way, shape, or form any control over this stuff, the estimate that you get might account for that, might, right? Might. Um, and I found even then it, it's not usually inaccurate. Um, and the reason why is because, as I was saying, uh, human beings are not hardwired to estimate in exact units of measurement. Okay, and we'll do an experiment later to show you exactly how not hardwired we are to do that. Um, but I, I want to kind of talk about um, what we can do, okay, so in our estimates, we can learn to account for these things, collaborative effort, complexity, and relative size. But we can't do it individually. We can't do it as individual team members. We can't do it in siloed teams, and we can't do it separately from our whole team, okay? The only way we can do this is collaboratively. Okay, that sounds like an abstract concept, and it kind of is, okay? So how do you learn to estimate for your whole group? How does a whole group learn to collaborate so well that as a group they can estimate? Um, well, you take an empirical approach. So did anyone take the empirical the, um, workshop that happened earlier? Did anybody in this room? There was one that happened earlier today. Yep. Do you want to hazard a, a definition of empirical? Do you want to uh, give a definition of empirical for the group? Okay, I'm putting them on. It's okay. Uh, I, I have one. It's okay. You don't have to do it. All right. Um, so this comes from the Princeton University Lexical Database. <laughs> Empirical means based on experimentation and observation rather than theory or logic. Okay. So why, why not logic? Why is logic not part of empiricism? <laughs> Go ahead. Yep. That is what we have to consider. Sometimes the logic plays over there. Mm -hmm. So we are going by what the data is uh, showing you. That yep. is how the answer is. It's a very good answer from, from the... Another thing is, you know, when we talk about experimentation observation, yep. all those things factors in, you know, what yep. we all discuss, you know, over, yep. over time. Over time. All these things average out, you know. Yes. So, you know, we cancel those. Yeah. So, so the only way it all, you can account for so much complexity, even within a team, is by, by observing the patterns over time and acting on them, right? Um, so where do we start? We start with our best guess. So we start with an initial guess, but that guess um, is only a foundation from which we operate, and then we observe the result, and then we try something else, right? So that, be that best guess is often based on intuition, um, and we assume it's not going to be accurate. So, in the spirit of empiricism, I'd like to do a little experiment here, okay? Just a tiny little experiment, okay? Um, any of you recognize this bottle? It's from Ikea. Um, all right, uh, I call this the guess what we all suck at estimates experiment. Um, all right, so how much liquid does this bottle hold? 100 ml. 100 ml, okay, I'm going to start writing this down. Anybody else? We have not 25 ml. Okay, 100 ml, 325 ml. What else? How much? How much is the same thing, right? How much does it hold? One. Okay. What else? Okay. 200. Okay. Sorry. What else? 50 ml. 50 ml. 75. 220. Okay. 220. All right. All right. Okay. So, all right. Do you all, do you all feel confident in your guesses? Who said yes? Okay. What? What, what was your guess? What was your guess? 
Okay. So, all right. So, um, the exact amount is 150 and up. Okay. But um, you all made a fatal assumption, and that is that I, as an American, understand remotely what milliliters means. Right? So, um, as an American, we don't measure in units of milliliter, right? So, point one, um, I, I, if you gave me these estimates, I wouldn't understand. Point two is, we had how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight estimates. There was one person who got it right. Um, so, um, probably based on experience, I'm guessing. Um, but, um, <laughs> Most of you didn't, right? So the question, so if I then asked you, if I then told you that this bottle is 500 milliliters, would you be able to roughly guess what this bottle is? Yeah. OK. Relatively, yeah. So you can compare this bottle with this bottle, right? OK. So as human beings, the way we are the way we intuitively measure is by comparing either with based on experience or based on the facts at hand, right? But if we try to guess exact units of measurement, we're almost always wrong, right? Unless we get lucky. Okay. So, can we actually estimate this loaf of bread in a post-apocalyptic zombie-infested world? Can we do it? I'm seeing a lot of people shaking their heads. Okay, so I've uh, I've, I've uh, taken a morale hit in my company. Okay, so all right, I believe we can, and I think the way we do that is we change the question from how long does it take to how hard is it. Okay, there's an important distinction here. Okay, so if I say how long does it take then you guys are going to try to give me an exact answer. It's human nature, right? It's a very directed question. You're going to try to give me a directed answer. How hard is it is a little more ambiguous, and it can give us a foundation that we can use for our empirical approach. OK, so I need a brave volunteer. Any, any, OK, go ahead. Can you, can you come up here, sir? Okay. So we're going to talk about estimating effort. It's okay. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I have a very important question for you. Okay. Um, have you ever created a chicken egg from scratch? <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so. <laughs> okay. Good one. Um, so. I have a question for you. When can I have this egg? <laughs> yeah. When, okay, let's say I, I, I'm giving you the chicken now. <laughs> Chicken's not required to be pregnant to lay an egg. Point of fact. So it's a natural mistake, though. I need to win my As your CEO, I'm losing confidence that you have the skills to get me my end. <laughs> okay. So I, I need historical data to size it. Or I need another story to size it. Compare it and size it. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Um, okay, so I'm going to, Sunil's having trouble answering the question, right? And I don't blame him. I, I absolutely do not blame him as me. As a CEO, of course I'm going to blame him. But as me, I don't blame him, okay? So I'm going to go to the, my other CEO self and give that person a piece of advice. 
to change the question. <laughs> okay. You have a chicken <laughs> with everything it needs to lay an egg. How much effort is required on your part to deliver me <laughs> an egg? Never actually been involved with a chicken laying an egg before. <laughs> okay. Um, 